the end of, of, the, of the retreat to the city and um, well done everybody that's done it and finished. John, did you want to, did you want to refer any, 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 any words? Pearls of wisdom. What, pearls of wisdom, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'd just like to uh, answer that just to thank all of you who've taken part in it. Thank you, those of you who've come along to support it and uh, particularly the folks who've travelled quite a distance um, to, to be part of this event. Um, particularly thanks to Steph for the food, which has been yes. outstanding, outstanding as usual. Uh, so uh, thank you for everybody. And, and to Yota for doing the bells, for yeah. first time on this, this retreat. Good, and a good a ring for a beginner, and a good nice sound, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank, thanks all of you. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. And nice to see Alan back in Japan. Oh yes. Um, he's left half of his body there. He's like <laughs> he'd lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that rice. I did the marathon monk thing. Oh, you yeah, did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well record, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know whether any, anybody usually we don't we yeah. If anybody who's been on the retreat wants to express anything or say anything, you, you're welcome to. Can I ask you a question for which you can blame John because John asked all of us these questions and mm. they're not easy. <laughs> um, and I, I wondered what you thought it was. The first question is, do you know, understand what dropping a body mind is? And the second one was, have you done it? And none of us really seem to know what it meant. So I was wondering, all right, because we've, we've been talking about, uh, I've been on a roll talking about emptiness, uh, you know, filling the, filling the emptiness with emptiness. Uh, and what all the dropping off body means, really, is the experience that you did. You know, you, are, you can have it on a, on a long term basis, but for most of us, it's a kind of sh short term experience of what it's like when um, the sense of self. Is, 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 is minimized or at least is not there. That feeling you get when you, you know, you're really focused and, uh, and you're not all caught up with your stuff, you're just doing your thing. That's dropped off body mind. So we probably all have experienced it. We've all experienced it, yeah. yeah. I thought John gave okay, really good answers, very close. But you know, <laughs> all get good answers, but yeah. close to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, when, 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 when Dolben's talking about dropping off body and mind, he's talking about um, like a much more radical transformation um, of, of, you know, a complete um, experience of reflecting the world exactly as the world is, rather than reflecting it through, through, the, through the conditioned mirror of our own experience. Because it can mean like Kensho. Concept. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about Kensho, yeah, but a yeah. Kensho is, you know, it's the same thing. It's on the whole spectrum. Some people have huge Kenshos, uh, which you know pass. Others have tiny ones and then bigger ones, and there's a whole, yeah, um, and they can all be a distraction. <laughs> they don't have to be, uh, you know. The, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Or they can be a radical experience, which is useful in changing your view. For sure. Um, but you know, like we've we've always talk, we've talked often about to, to, what a waste of time it is to effort to, to make an effort to be effortless, to have the purpose to have no purpose. They're all contradictions. You know? So. The idea of striving for a Kensho is, 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 a, is a nonsense. Is it? Because that which is striving for, it can't be present when it happens. It has to be a more skillful, kind of relaxed, uh, just being present. And if, if, you know, if, you have, if, there's, if there's good grace in the air, or you're particularly blessed at one time, uh, then, then you... you, you, you we do have a, a sense of what this whole tradition is about. How, how lovely it is. But then it passes like everything else, you know. Uh, 
Yeah. I'm, you know, just, I, I, I like the fact that um, Dogan's teacher, at the point that he was sort of authenticating his uh, transmission, said, You are dropped off, dropping off. Yeah. You've gone beyond, going beyond. You've gone beyond, going beyond, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think for most of us, just reaching the dropping off is pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> the dropping off, the dropping off is, you know. Yeah. Drop that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's drop that one. <laughs> so I don't have to strive, but I do have to get up at half five in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, <laughs> you have to strive, you have to strive, and sleep, strive. <laughs> I mean, you know, the worst is to get into that kind of wishy-washy place where because, you know, there's no eye and everything's, uh, you know, so we don't have to do anything. You know, just, just, just that, that's just, as, that's just as being stuck. <coughs> In a way, I wanted to talk, to, sorry, did, did anybody else own a treat or anything? When you swing your chair around, you kind of got a feeling, you kind of, yeah, yeah, you're kind of looking out the window and having to switch your neck. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. Any anyone else got any uh, questions that have arisen out of the retreat? Absolute clarity. <laughs> I can tell. I wanted to. to uh, well, not, well, well not, I'm not going to talk a lot today. I'm sure. You. But I did. I did. I thought it would be quite useful at the end of a retreat in which you know we ch we chanted that we chanted the four vows. Four vows are really interesting. Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to save them. Not incidentally, <coughs> the four vows are in in all the different traditions always um, translated in the same way. So the way that we the way that we chant them, I don't particularly. You know, I'm not particularly enamoured of them. I particularly don't like the last one. You know, last uh, for the way the for the way is. I'm not sure. For the way is possible. I vow to attain it. Well, it's how you know. Unsurpassable. Yeah. Anyway, it's a, it, I, I, I think it's really useful to, to really you know forensically look at these things. What we talk about. And of course, changing them is you, you then get another version which itself isn't perfect. It's very hard to get these things together. But finally, what what the four vows are about uh, are, 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 are the exercise of kindness. I'm not going to use the word compassion. It's, uh, for some reason, compassion is, has a bit of a smelly tongue to me just now. It's kindness. How do we exercise kindness? Um, and Interestingly, a, a young man who practices with me, uh, in his reading, suddenly discovered the Bodhisattva vow, you know, that he was going to give up his enlightenment until everybody else was enlightened. And he said, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> why would I want to do that? So, well, fine, you know, at your age, why would you? You know, you've got too much to do for yourself yet to get yourself sorted out, you know, having to save everybody. So, but anyway, so there's, so I suppose there are three ways in this tradition that we, that we can exercise kindness. The first is the ordinary one, you know, you see somebody with a, an elderly person shopping or passing the road or somebody with a heavy bag or some, just, somebody just needs your help, you know, and, and you, you see it and you do it. The second one, I guess, is when uh, at a certain point in your life, you, you really do take on board the fact that, uh, as the Buddha said, there is old age, there is sickness, and there is death. <laughs> and they're guaranteed, pretty much. And when you really take that on board, then, then I think a kindness and a compassion for everyone else arises. It's just, you know, it just, we just, it just naturally arises. And then the third one is when, even when we have some understanding or some experiential experience of dropping our body and mind, and we realize to some lesser or greater degree that the sense of identity that we carry around, the sense of I, is itself a fabrication. Then, and then we discover that we're all in the same boat. And we see people who are in terrible pain or you know, suffering because they're so identified with their own view of who they are. 
then that's the third way, you know, a third kindness that we that we that we over we overlook the difficulty and stubbornness and things that arise out of being with folk who are really stuck in this self-identity, you know, of their own beliefs and their own passions and their own convictions and their own concepts. So there's those three things. Okay, so then we, so that, that's out the way. So we now start with sentient beings and numberless, I vow to save them. There are two interesting ways to look at this. You know, the first way is, is the way of um, uh, um, socially, socially, what's it called? Socially aware? Engaged. Engaged. So socially engaged, yeah. Socially engaged. You know, we see a lot of difficulties and pain and injustice and, and wrong going on, and we want to right it. We want to bring some kindness into the world, and that's, that's one way. The other implication of this, of saving human beings, is that we ourselves strive to become awake, to be more awakened. And in, and in being more awakened, i.e. bringing more life into our own life, because for me that's, that's all that awakening means, is to bring more life into our own life, you know, is to, I think, hopefully, in that embodiment, to, to at least support other people in becoming awakened. And it, the two aren't necessarily separate, but there is, there can be, you know, there has been in the Buddhist world, a division between the socially engaged people and the people who won't become awakened. The, the socially engaged people could consider these people to be selfish, they're only concerned about their own affairs, you know, their own awakening. But in a more sophisticated uh, view, both are valid and it depends, it depends a lot on your own nature and your own personality. You, you know, what do you want to do? How do you want to engage with the world? Um, I've never been a particularly socially engaged person. That hasn't, hasn't been something I've found a facility to do. But I, you know, I try and do it on a personal basis in the situations around me and the things I find. But it's obviously really valid that when uh, Mr. Trump comes to London, Got lots of people go down there and across the fuss. You know, I'm completely up for that. You know, but <coughs> probably won't go myself, but you know, happy to contribute to your train fare. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a large bill for half the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> however, when we when we come to the reality of trying to put this stuff into practice. What we discover, whichever path we went for, that of course we're, we are ourselves trapped and caught up in our own greed, anger, and ignorance, our own conditioning, our own you know problems, our own issues, and uh, uh, which arise out of our desires, if you like, our attachments. So that then brings us to the second vow, which is desires are inexhaustible, I vow to put them into them. So that that brings us on to the second one. How do we personally manage to deal with our own stuff? <clears throat> and one way to look at it is that we use whatever life kind of throws at us as a way to become more awakened. So that that's always been my position. Really, how do we how 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 in lots of different circumstances which seem endless and yeah, it's dark and you know, you've got a moment of peace and something else arises. How do we embrace our lives? How do we really do that? You know, and can we? And if we can't, can we forgive ourselves? You know, so this kindness that we're talking about, just the backdrop to all these things is, for me anyway, it has to start with you being kind to yourself because if you're not kind to yourself, then it's... It's quite, you know, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's important because your own well, without your own well-being being taken care of, you can't really take care of other people's well-being. <clears throat> and then um, that then brings us to the third vow, 
which is uh, the uh, dharmas are boundless, I vow to master them. So, <coughs> funny when you when I break them into, into lines, I forget them, I only know them as four. The dharmas are boundless, I vow to master them. Yeah. So the dharmas are your life, you know, that, that's the, that, so that's, that's the, the dharma is everything. You know, there are different ways of looking at dharma. It's a confusing word when you start practice because dharma means both the actual teachings, but it also means everything that goes on in your life. So that's the third one. Can I embrace my life? Can I, can the dharmas are boundless, I vow to master them? Can you, can you in some way diminish or curb the things that you do that cause yourself suffering? It's not easy. It sounds like, it sounds like sensible. Why wouldn't you do something to curb your own suffering? But I think all of us can pragmatically say that we don't. <laughs> Uh, and then we get to the fourth vow, which is uh, somebody. Somebody want to say the Buddha way is unsurpassable. The Buddha way is unsurpassable. I vow to attain it. Well, what is the Buddha way? If you're doing the other three, then aren't you? Why do you need the fourth? Yeah. <coughs> I mean, you could say, I vow to commit to the other three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But it's, the Buddha way is, I think, taken care of in, uh, in, in, in saving all sentient beings. It could be, I vow to awaken. And whatever awaken means, you know, what does awaken mean for you? Because, you know, this whole practice is only about you. Which is wonderful, isn't it? I mean, you know, the small self loves it actually, yeah? <laughs> It's only about me. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it, it's, it's, it's the you, it's the me that when the, when the Buddha said, I am the world honored one. He wasn't, he wasn't, you know when he says, I am the world on him, well, he, I, I, I'm assuming that he wasn't talking about Tathagata. You know, I, only me, only I am the world on him, well. So this I, this me, is, is, you know, it's both, it's both the universal you, that includes me, happily, and the, the individual you that needs taken care of. So, uh, for me, the Buddha way is how to take care of both. How to take care of the universal you, or the uni how to take care of the uni universality of everything, and how to take care of yourself. Can you do both? And sometimes we veer more toward one, and sometimes we veer more toward the other. Mm. But ideally, how do we do both? Um, I'm just trying to see that you don't, in one translation I read. Uh, <laughs> doesn't work as well, but it, it, it says, um, but a way is unattainable, I found, to attain it. Yeah. Because you know, each one appears to be a contradiction. Yeah, it? yeah. Um, but, but that very thing of attainment, we know through the teaching, <coughs> practice, is, is a mistake, is a delusion. Yeah, yeah. So, at, attaining this Buddha way, is it, is it sort of attaining my own, my own life? What do you think? Mm. You know, is embracing my, yeah. really being fully present to my own life is the Buddha yeah in that sense because what we have to remember is the four vows are from the, the relative perspective they're from the dualistic i mean sentient beings are numberless are about to save them from the non-dual perspective there's nothing to be saved from so you can't save them they're already saved from the non-dual perspective would you say that the buddha way is done from the Buddha way, don't, the, certainly don't, the Buddha way includes Donald Trump, yeah. It includes everything. Yeah. But the way we see things, the way we discriminate between you know, good and bad, yeah. includes you know, what we um, perceive as bad or negative. I suppose ideally the Buddha way would be that we perceive that, um, that the, the practicalities of what he's wanting to do are wrong. <coughs> But the, for the man himself, we would still hope that he doesn't suffer too much. Could, could, can I say something? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I think to include Donald Trump's delusions as well is part of the way. To acknowledge and include his... When you see his delusions, 
Pardon? Are you are you seeing your own delusion? Well, yes, of course. It might it might be that I've got to embrace my own delusion. Yeah. But you know, when we look at the outside world and we we see delusion and suffering, it, it is to embrace that as well, mm. uh, as as part of this this bigger life. Let's put it away. Um, so unfortunately, we can't just erase that bit that we don't quite agree with. Yeah. Much as we'll try when he comes to London. Because part of his behaviour is human nature. That's why yeah. he got elected. It's that tendency must be in me. And some bits I manifest more than others. But if I have compassion for me, I have to have compassion for him and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. He's authentically himself. <laughs> He's probably more authentic than yeah. He's all of us on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Super steroids, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Sensei, um, I, regarding the four vows, um, I remember, I cannot quite remember which master it was, um, this um, encounter dialogue about um, the wind and the um, fanning himself with a Oh fire. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's Genjo Khan. Yeah, Genjo yeah. Um, if the, the, there was a, sco a trainee who asked the master if the, the wind is everywhere, yeah. Why then do you fan yourself? Mm. And the master answers, well, if you say that you do not need to fan yourself, then you understand that the wind is everywhere, but you do not understand the essence of the wind. Yeah. Um, and then um, the trainee asked, what is the essence of the wind? And then the master just kept fanning himself, and that was it. I think that kind of marries well the relative side, the need yeah. to keep fanning yourself, to recognise yeah. that there is the wind um, of the four vows and the fact that the wind is indeed everywhere. I, otherwise I'll suffocate and die, but I haven't. <laughs> so. I, think, I think the thing we also have to, it's really important to remember, is, is, um, <coughs> is to not in a way bring the romantic or the idealistic view to bear that when you embark on this practice or embark on the idea of, the four, of you know, maintaining the four vows or awakening, that it somehow is going to make your life easier. I mean, this is a tough practice. Does it make your life easier? Why would it make your life easier? Because you become much more aware and concerned about things that are going on. Stuff, stuff starts to come up for you, you know? And as uh, Trump has said, you know, the, the, the more you practice, the bigger and bigger the broken heart. <laughs> It's rather sad, but Gemba had another view on it. He said it's it's not a broken heart. The, the more and more open the heart, which I actually prefer. Um, and at the same time, th there is pragmatically what I see anyway is that in spite of it being more difficult. More peace, more peace arises. It's a kind of contradiction. Yeah. So that's the mystery of the whole thing. That's the mystery. <laughs> that's the mystery that we, you know, we, we we all have to live with on a day to day basis, and and it will remain with us until old age, sickness, and death <laughs> wheels its so. Yeah. But isn't that wonderful? I mean, a mystery for me is much more interesting than an answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody. Okay.